<laughs> right, John, thank you very much for today. Um, so, Cabriolet's looking absolutely amazing. It really is. Cheers. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? From what I gather, it's, the, the history of it's a bit sketchy. Um, it's sitting on a 56 pan, uh, 56 engine, so it's got the original matching uh, pan and engine, 30 horsepower. Uh, the body's registered as a... It's registered on the body for some reason, uh, and the body's registered 58, which is a bit of an anomaly, uh, where I think it should be registered on the pan, which right. would make it 56. So I call it a 58 because that's what it's registered as. Finding the history of something, yeah. you know, uh, without all the documentation is difficult. Um, I did consider trying to see if I could contact DVLA and see if I could get it re-registered as a 56, uh, but it doesn't really bother me that much. No, have you got the... It's, it's got the oval dash. It's got yeah. the oval dash, wow. Yeah, okay. um, and, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, I love it. It's absolutely awesome. Unless you've not got the semaphores. Not got the semaphores, no. Um, again, because um, the body's registered as 58, not sure if it's a 58 body or if it's lost its semi-fours at some Someone's point. Someone's filled them in at some yeah, point. Uh, yeah. just, I just don't know. Uh, I mean, it wasn't uncommon back then to make the cars look newer, was it? New, so, yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, um, so colour-wise? It's actually a, a um, Range Rover Evoque colour. Okay. Cool. Um, it's called Yulong White, which obviously you can tell it's blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's named Yulong White. Um, and it's a three-stage pearl. Um, you can't wow. really see very well in this colour. In this, sorry, in this light. Yeah, you can just see it's got that. that yeah, on um, the bends, doesn't it? When the when the ha when the sun hits it, it really does pop. I say it suits the car. It looks like yeah. the car. Yeah, yeah. It does. What colour was it originally? It was red originally. Right. Yeah. Um, so red or black? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I have recently. I have been sort of uh, considering repainting it. I was. I've been looking at uh, House of Colour Burgundy. Uh, wine it's called right burgundy wine is it called uh, which is almost it's a flip color it almost looks black in certain areas but then it goes to red right. and it's a candy color so i, I considered that but uh, <laughs> just a consideration yes yeah, uh, uh, for the future i noticed you changed the deadly that actually and um i i just when it went to 58 i was like, i'm sure the other one's the original one but if you've got a an earlier dash then you'd, this you'd is it yeah so uh, so again i wanted the correct debt lid for to match the dash and and everything else so if i if I do end up re-registering as a 56, it's all correct. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just, I like that. Plus, I also prefer the, the earlier oval. That was a that was a, a, a lucky find, to be fair, because they're not easy to find oval. No, I've, I've never seen one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oval vert debt lids are, are really difficult to find. So the bumpers and stuff, are they are they the US spec ones? They're or? US spec with genuine MP overriders on them as well. Right. Uh, so they're not repo ones, they're the genuine ones. Wow. Um, they're... Um, I've had them since the 90s. Uh, <laughs> uh, the clamshell exhausts, are they uh, vintage works or vintage uh, The air-cooled accessories. Air-cooled accessories, yeah, right. Yeah, so they, they just bolt onto the tailpipe. Um, so, so yeah, they are Rapo. I, I would like the original, is it Robbery, I think, do the original ones. Um, I'm on the lookout for some of them because I do have the, the genuine Robbery gravel guards right. uh, and boot scraper. So they're the genuine ones, okay. uh, which the, the, tail, the tailpipes are a matching set. Right. Um, so... Yeah, if I do come across those, I'll change them out. So the exhaust is connected to a standard box and just a complete standard. It's just a complete standard system, just with those as, as garnishes right. on the end. And what's the engine? The standard thirty horsepower. It's nice and clean. Yeah. Is it the original engine for the car then as well? Um, no, it's not. Uh, it's actually an industrial engine. Okay. Um, so it's a fifty-six. So it's the right year. Yeah. It's the correct year, uh, but it's actually an industrial engine uh, that's commonly used in sort of like water pumps and things like that wow. um, and it was found I think it had some like 20 hours worth of running on it that's <laughs> all it had and it's honestly one of the sweetest running engines I've ever had so did it's, they have to change the cams and stuff in it or no it's all I think it runs slightly higher compression on the industrial engines okay because um, the ba they're, they're basically designed to run at a constant yeah. um, uh, speed and of course, there's never been any stress on them or anything. So, but the internals are it's the all, same as a bug. Yeah, yeah. Normal bug. I mean, as you know, I am looking for um, a supercharger for it. Yeah. Uh, simply because I, I just I don't want to take the engine out and put in a a more you know a bigger 1600 or something. I want to keep it period. Um, so you're looking for a Judson or a, super, a Speedwell? Or yeah, like yeah. That. I mean, I'd, I'd consider doing it going down the Ocresa route as well, uh, twin carbs. But uh, then you're looking at taking the heads off and replacing the heads and. It's, all, it's, it's, it's an easier process just replacing it with a supercharger. And right. it's cool having a supercharger, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I take it you've got a standard gearbox in there as well? It has. It's just got the standard 1200 gearbox, yeah. <laughs> you probably do you drive it in places. You do drive it to the shows and stuff. Oh, like yeah, that, yeah, so. yeah. The only time I trailered it last year was I trailered it to Volksworld show because 
it's just a hell of a drive there mm. and it was in March with no heating or anything I thought I just didn't fancy that drive so has it been featured in the Volkswagen show it was yeah it, got, it was inside of the Volkswagen last oh, year brilliant stuff okay. yeah um, to be honest that was always it's always been sort of a, a bucket list thing for me that yeah. I've been I've been into air cools for probably 30 odd years and it was always a bucket list always a bucket thing to get a car into Volkswagen this year's the first time it's really been out because um, I was working on it through lockdown and just before lockdown so this year's the first time it's been out so yeah most of the shows it's been to it has won something and I'd say it's got a couple of best in shows which has been great which one was that was that Odyssey or it got it got best in show at Dub Odyssey yeah, it, it got amazing there it got best in show at uh, the auto show at Doncaster Racecourse right uh, yeah, there it got runner up best in show at Elsica at the races um Awesome. I wasn't allowed to win anything at Festi- VW Festival. <laughs> <laughs> so VW Festival's your, your little baby? It is, yeah. So that's our show at Harewood House. Um, I think we're in as, I think next year's his 18th year now there. Wow. Um, we, usually end, we usually get about 20,000 people there over the weekend. Brilliant stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, glad, it's good to be back. Um, so the wheels, the fushers, are they genuine fushers or? They, they were, no, they're SSP fushers, but they've, uh, they were sent off to a, a guy in Bulgaria. Right. Um, and he machined machined them down took the faces out, took the faces off so they just ended up just being the face right and then rebuilt them as a, a three-piece split wheel wow um and I, saw, I noticed it's got the the studs around yes it, so, so they're actually a split they're a split rim now um so the, the backs are seven inch wide yeah and the fronts are if you notice the offset on the front it's a really odd offset they're, they're made to look like i don't know if you've ever heard of the king crab foosh i don't know so no. back in the day they made something called a king crab foosh which was to made to look like the four inch one so the profile of the, of the um spoke is higher than the rim so it sticks out more so the, this really rare piece back in the day um and it was a i think it was either a five or a six inch wide but it was made to look like a four inch um so when i had these built i wanted that look i wanted them to sort of yeah. redo the king crab look so these are actually six and a half inch wide. Well, so they don't look at it at all. No, no, but made to look like the skinny four inch. And it's, on a, it's actually on a four inch narrowed beam as well, a, a EVA resto beam. Right. Um, so Suspension then. So you've yeah. got the, have you got the bolt up on kit on it? Yep. Them, so, so again, this, this system that's on here is Max's premium system. I can't fault it. It's absolutely awesome. His, his products are amazing. So yeah, fully bolt up front and back. Um, the management system is it's running currently running AccuAir um, E Level Plus, which is their new uh, system, uh, and it all runs. The management all runs via the app. So oh. um, I didn't want to keep that in there. I didn't want. I wanted it all smooth. Didn't want anything visible. So, so you do it from your phone. So it all runs from the phone. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So uh, have you got a central airbag on the on the front, or is it is it, it air shocks? No, or? it's air shocks. It's okay. got his premium air shocks, um, which again I think he'd only just. He'd only just released at the time. Right. Uh, they're an amazing piece of kit. So, um, yeah, it, it drives brilliant. And with the with the um, with the AccuAir system, and it runs the E level. There's a there's a height sensor on every corner. Right. So it knows what. So if you you're never going to do it in this, but if you ever went into a corner hard, you know, it knows and it'll level it back up again. Okay. Or if you've got people in the back or some heavy something heavy it knows and it'll level you back up so you can as you're driving it you can hear this the air ride all the time just sort of leveling things out a bit yeah yeah Um, it's a really cool piece of a piece of equipment and then in the front we've got um um five gallon seamless tank in the front uh single compressor um and hard lines running all hard lines can you actually drive it on its when it's fully down, or do you have to be? No, I mean when it's down like that, it's literally sitting on the um, chassis chassis rails because right. of the chassis strengtheners. Because on the vert, there's there's that section extra, which yeah. is your chassis uh, strengtheners. So that's as low as you can get a vert to go. Okay, uh, it's sat on the floor. Right. <laughs> okay, so are the floor pans all stock, or they did you flat pan there? Uh, no, it's all stock. Okay, yeah, everything's stock in there. It was all brand new um, when it was done. It was all um, the whole. Chassis was all rebuilt. Everything's brand new in there. Um, it's as it's as nice underneath as it is on top, to be nice. honest. Well, I, I noticed the, the spare wheel strap actually, but I didn't realise it was a, a a custom thing you'd done. Yeah, yeah. I just went on Amazon and bought two two blokes belts, two old belts. Um, <laughs> new belts, a little bit of brass thing is, and just made it. And I think it cost me about twenty quid to make. That looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's really good. pleased with that actually how it's come out. Yeah, it was a Sunday afternoon project. And your your running boards are blue. They're they're a Turkish. Turkish blue, I think they are. Right. Uh, again, an optional extra. 
um, that were available back in the day. You could have coloured running boards. Um, what, from the factory? No, no, there was there were an optional yeah. electric you could. Oh, sorry, there were an aftermarket part that okay. was back in the day you could you could purchase. Uh, I think dealers actually did fit them. Um, but um, I yeah, I've never never seen it. it's the first blue yeah. pair I've ever seen. I, I had a, um, a sixty six years ago a green one that had green running board covers, right. um, and that that looked really cool. So yeah, just something a little bit different, really. What's the spark plugs for? <laughs> They're just spare spark plugs. Okay, fair yeah, enough. It's just a spark plug holder and spare spark plugs, so you're always carrying them. Uh, I think the I think they're meant to be bolted to the fan shroud. Right. Uh, but I just I thought they looked quite cool there. You talk up a little uh, little Tesla thing and I'm crackling away. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's that in the vintage um, the vintage fire extinguisher. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, um, never have to use that. Yeah. yeah. Who did the uh, the pinstriping? Um, Matt um, Danger Matt. Uh, did the pinstriping. Um, he's done on uh, just a few bits on the bodywork and the fuel tank and a few other bits. Um, he'd he'd done some really good artwork on the back of the debt lid, but unfortunately, I'll obviously lost that. So I might need to have him doing that again. Um, I just I just like a bit of pinstriping. Yeah. So you got the uh, the US spec bumpers on the front as well. Uh huh. Yeah. Solid chunky beasts now, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, when it when I first got it, it came with blades, and yeah, I've always had a punch on for the more chrome, the better. I'm a I'm a bit of a magpie. I like shiny things. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so a safari window. Yes. That's an interesting one. Yeah. Um. So it's a loose nuts one from Jeremy in, in America. He was, he was absolutely brilliant. To be fair, uh, he helped me out a lot with that. Um, there's absolutely no reason to put a safari window on a vert <laughs> at all. There's no, it just doesn't make sense. But I just thought, I, I just really want one. This will look so cool. Can we have a look inside? Of course, yeah, yeah. So the, the interior is absolutely stunning. Where's that one from? Uh, so it was retrimmed um, at in a place in Coventry. Um, so it's a it's a tweed centre with um, vinyl cream. It's a, it's it's a nice. It's a nice combination between the cream and the, and the blue. I think it's nice that it's not all leather because that's where people tend to go a lot. Yeah, it? it's yeah. Too much sometimes. It's it's not as vintage looking. Uh -huh. So yeah, I like the old, so the tweed look almost. Yeah. Uh, the, the steering wheel is that? Uh, I've seen them around a few times, but I don't know what they are. What? So it's a it's a Petri. So that's a Petri steering wheel. Right. Um, it's actually a reproduction of uh, the original Petri banjo steering wheel. Okay. Which were generally fitted to three five sixes right. uh, as an optional extra. Um, so it's made by it's a flat four one that as I say it's a um, a reproduction because the original Petris are crazy. Impossible. Yeah, and when if you do find one, they're they're, all, they're usually cracked and right. yeah, but. Uh, and the the gear shifter, uh, were you experiment for something. Like that? So yeah, I was I was a craft of Oldsworld show. I was approached by Vintage Speed, who right. were just about to release this this shifter, which is called the Elizabeth. Right. Um, it's eighteen karat gold. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> yeah, I know it's a bit crazy. It's eighteen karat gold and uh, ivory knob, and it's got the apparently it's, it's reminiscent of the Acrasa gear knob, which was a red gear knob, and. Oh, it's on the other side. You can see there's a little plaque on it. It's number one of 500. And is everything else in the on the dash in that stock? Or? So it, there's um, there's the rev counter, the six volt rev counter, VDM, uh, video rev counter. That's a, quite a rare piece. Um, the glove box pull is a genuine MP1. Right. Uh, I've still got the. Yeah, that was a new old stock one. I ended up ripping out the packaging. But I felt all oh, because the old MP stuff in packaging is worth quite. A, so I actually. But sorry, I'm using it. So that's a genuine MP pull. Right. Uh, the door on here, these are genuine MP as well. Wow. Um, I used to collect a lot of MP stuff back in the day, and um, these are just sort of a couple of bits I had left. Right at a 58. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> 
big out for nothing. Tell me very best to uh, to do it just this way. Give me wheel arches now. What? Underneath. Oh no. Sorry. Then we have to wash it. <laughs> <laughs> 